On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including SpaceX leaps into launch pad repairs while the FAA gets sued for the Starship explosion, NASA discusses the new laser communication network they will test on Artemis II, and the European Space Agency is looking to develop their own heavy lift rocket. This is the Space Race. SpaceX is diving headfirst into repairs at their orbital launch test site in Boca Chica, Texas. The April 20th launch of the company's prototype Starship heavy lift vehicle system exploded four minutes after liftoff and left what originally looked like a catastrophic amount of damage. However, as more data has come in and as engineers and contractors have had a chance to look over the site, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is happy to report that the damage looks much worse than it actually is. Elon gave an update during a recent Twitter Spaces event where he went over details of the launch as well as the damage to the site. The tank farm damage is superficial, only the external tank shielding was damaged, and those are very easily replaced. He hinted that those large vertical towers will eventually be replaced by the lower profile horizontal tanks as well. The chewed up drawworks on the Mechazilla Tower also seem to have only sustained minor damage as the tower's arms have been able to lift up and down for repairs without issue since the launch. And even the crater under the orbital launch mount, that giant hole that was easily the most dramatic damage caused on the day, is on its way to being filled. As it turns out, the ground underneath the concrete pad was mostly sand, which likely contributed to the tough fondag concrete breaking up in the first place. The low density sand didn't support the concrete from below and allowed it to get pushed down and crack under the pressure. Considering SpaceX is going to be installing their new water cooled steel plate pad before the next launch, the company is likely going to be taking advantage of that big hole under the OLM to complete that procedure sooner rather than later. From what Elon has said, the steel plate will cover all of the ground underneath the launch mount and around the legs. The plates will be perforated with hundreds of small holes that will act as a big sprinkler or like an upside down shower head for the new water cooling system. Water will flow up from under the ground and provide an insulating layer over top of the steel to absorb heat and vibration. So things seem to be in hand at Boca Chica. The repairs and testing might take a bit of time, but it certainly shouldn't stop another launch from happening this year. Elon is saying as many as four more launch attempts in 2023, which sounds optimistic, but it's good that he's staying positive. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the political fallout. On May 1st, the Federal Aviation Administration, the U.S. government organization responsible for licensing rocket launches, among other things, was sued by five environmental and cultural heritage nonprofits, claiming that the FAA failed in its responsibility to fully investigate the potential dangers of allowing SpaceX to launch their prototype rocket. Now, just like when the FAA investigates failed launches, this sort of lawsuit is more representative of these companies doing their jobs than anything else. Starbase Boca Chica is surrounded by wildlife preserves, state parks, and places that hold cultural significance to local indigenous tribes. Sand and ash from the Starship launch was reported as far as Port Isabel, Texas, which is about six miles from the launch site and means that the local protected park space was affected. And of course, there's the fact that the flight termination system, the device which breaks a failing rocket into smaller debris in the event of an emergency, didn't work properly during the April 20th launch. If we look at the video leading up to the final explosion, you can see a few long jets of gas shooting out from one side of the rocket as it tumbles through the air. Those are coming from holes in the propellant tank created by the FTS charges, and that action should have burst the tank immediately. Elon reported that it took over 40 seconds after the SpaceX team activated the system for Starship to actually explode. That's a pretty worrying problem that could have easily endangered nearby protected land if the rocket had lost control sooner. So, Regardless of whether any wildlife or people were harmed, it would be weird for these nonprofits to not take any action in this case. But unfortunately for the FAA, this lawsuit isn't just going through the motions. The suing groups believe that the FAA should have done a more in-depth environmental study known as an environmental impact statement 
before giving SpaceX their launch license. Back in June 2022, the FAA completed their final programmatic environmental assessment, which allowed SpaceX to begin testing Starship and plan for a full-on launch. However, a PEA is a comparatively light investigation, and the suing companies say that this wasn't enough, especially given Starship's explosive debut. The primary argument of the suit is reportedly the fact that the FAA had originally intended on doing a full impact statement, but had waived that requirement based on SpaceX's preferences, according to attorneys. This sort of adjustment happens sometimes, normally when the company being evaluated shows that they are spending a lot of time and money on making sure their rocket is safe, and SpaceX has been putting in a lot of work to do just that. So the decision could just as easily be explained by the FAA's first assessment finding SpaceX behaving seriously about their safety procedures and deciding to give them a chance. That doesn't mean the FAA doesn't deserve to get sued, of course. It is their responsibility to make sure everything is safe before a launch is even allowed. But this is also something that will get sorted out in the courts. What we want to know is, will this affect the time frame for the next Starship launch? The FAA likely won't be able to give another license to SpaceX before this suit is dealt with, and they'll almost definitely have more safety hoops for SpaceX to jump through afterwards. So, yeah, this will likely set the next launch back a bit. But Starship has too many big missions riding on its success to be grounded by a small suit like this. Both NASA and the U.S. Defense Department have a stake in the heavy lift rocket system, and there aren't many other vehicles that can just replace it. So yes, Starship will be grounded until the FAA can clear the air with these local groups, but there was already going to be some downtime while SpaceX crews made their repairs and tested the new launch hardware. Just like when they were forced to wait for the first FAA environmental assessment, they will probably just use the time to improve and plan. NASA has announced that they will be including a new laser communication system on board Artemis II, a method that should allow live streaming of video from lunar orbit. Within the next couple of years, human activity in space is going to dramatically increase, and the biggest concern for organizations like NASA involves how communication will be handled between the Earth and any vehicles we send out into the void. Currently, NASA has been using the Deep Space Network to communicate with its drones, probes, and rovers that are operating past low Earth orbit. The DSN is an impressive communications array, three ground stations filled with various sizes of antenna coordinating every deep space mission NASA and other agencies have operated since 1963. This is because the equipment used in the DSN is extremely sensitive, with some of the largest antennas able to pick up a signal 20 billion times weaker than the power signal put out by a modern wristwatch battery. And that's great for deep space missions, but the bandwidth of those transmissions are very low, and with advancements in laser communication technology, NASA believes it's time to test a laser network in the cislunar sphere of influence. Optical laser communication uses beams of light to transmit large streams of data, but they've notoriously had problems with signal degradation in the past. Dust, clouds, cosmic radiation, all of it could cause signal noise. That has to be dealt with, and most of the recent advancements in laser communication tech has been in keeping that signal clear. So, with that in mind, NASA's plan is to send Artemis II with the O2O, the Orion Artemis II Optical Communication System, and test it by live-streaming portions of the mission, as well as transmitting data back and forth at potentially 200 gigabits per second. This speed was clocked in late 2021, when NASA launched some demonstration satellites. Both the Laser Communication Relay Demonstration and the Terabyte Infrared Delivery CubeSat were launched and tested with the T-Bird CubeSat pushing that 200 gigabit per second download speed. That's more than two terabytes of data within the five minute pass this CubeSat made over the program's ground station. So the theory is that setting up a communication network in our local cislunar space could provide the Artemis missions and more with the ability to communicate much more quickly than previous systems could support. And NASA wants to be ready to prove it. In addition to the O2O system launching on Artemis II, NASA is prepping a new laser receiver hub to be added to the International Space Station. They are calling it Illumat, 
and it's due to be attached to the Japanese experiment module on the ISS later this year. Once it's up and running, it will be able to communicate with the LCRD, a laser communication relay satellite that NASA already has in geostationary orbit. The pair of them should be able to handle the data stream from Artemis II once it arrives in lunar orbit and begin transmitting. This is pretty exciting. Every image or video we've ever received from the moon and farther has either been very grainy and patchy or has been recorded and released by NASA at a later time. This will be the first time we'll be getting live, crisp shots of the moon in the same way we get live video from the ISS. And if they can have this work reliably, it will solve a lot of communication issues between Earth and the moon for future missions. The European Space Agency has announced that they are investigating options for the development of their own heavy lift, fully reusable rocket as they struggle to compete with the commercially supported US market. The ESA has asked Arian Group and rocket factory Osberg to assist them in their study called Protein, which is going to have until this September to see if it's possible for the ESA to develop a fully reusable rocket system with lift capabilities like SpaceX's prototype Starship vehicle. Currently, Arian Space is the only active service provider with several other companies being at least partially owned by Arian Space or not having an active vehicle yet. Arian runs the Vega Small Lift Rocket, the Arian 5 Heavy Lift, and has another heavy lift called Arian 6 in development. But compared to the huge list of commercial and government-run launch agencies operating in the US, it's clear that Europe needs to do something to catch up soon. The problem is that unlike the US, Europe has kept a pretty tight grip on their launch sovereignty. It's true that companies like SpaceX are mostly funded by government contracts at this point, but they certainly didn't start out that way, and allowing commercial companies to design and test new rocket systems is why the US is in such a strong position currently. So if the ESA manages to figure out a new heavy lift option, they'll have to struggle with the profitability of a vehicle designed for only one customer to use. They need all the functionality of SpaceX's rocket line, and they need it to operate with just the European member countries as clients, which could work but would definitely require a policy shift to more space investment to support the effort. To be fair to the ESA, it is a good time to be doing a study like this. New and innovative launch systems are popping up all over the place from SpaceX's own reusable boosters to Relativity's 3D printed rockets. But those innovations were made because of investments by the US government and private interests in commercial companies. If Europe wants to maintain an independent launch network for their member states, they're likely going to have to change their stance on supporting commercial launch companies or just start hiring SpaceX for rideshares. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.